Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I have this fun little snowman flip-flop card to show you. And we're going to be using some products from Art Impressions. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with this cute little snowman. And this is from the Art Impressions pop-up 3D card set. And this is called the Snowman Pop-Ups. But we're going to be using it a little differently today, and I'll show you that here in a second. So I've placed some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock in my Mini Misty, and I'm going to stamp this using the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I'm just using a regular chalk eraser to press that out. And now I'm, to color this in, I'm going to use these beautiful Jane Davenport Palette Pastels, and this set is called Chilled. And these are these beautiful chalky pastels. To color with these, I'm going to be using the Jane Davenport Blenders. And this is a dual tip sponge uh, applicator. It's almost like a makeup sponge. But what's nice about these is they're nice and long, so they're really easy to hold. It's like holding a pencil almost. To shade the snow on the snowman, I'm going to use this kind of a grayish, purpley grayish color here. And that'll just add a little shadow here. And you can see that I can use the side of that blender as well as the tip of that blender. And that tip really does get into the little detailed sections of these images. And then to blend it out, you can go to the flat edge of the brush and just blend it nice and smoothly. So if you're doing uh, kind of like bigger areas, on your stamps, you can use the flatter side to really blend those out. So I'm just adding some, some of that same shadowing up under the hat and then a little bit of pink to the cheeks and I'll add a little pink to the nose as well. And we're going to be adding a little more dimension to that nose later on. So now I'm gonna start with this lighter lavender color here and I'm going to just kind of just blend that in a little bit. I almost kind of took the approach as if I was coloring with my, uh, my watercolor pens. Um, just kind of lay down that lightest color, a little bit of it. And then here I'm just kind of blending that all around. And then I'm going to grab that next darker shade and just start adding in my shadows. And again, to Put this color down, you can use the tip of the applicator, but to blend it, you can kind of use both the tip and the side of the applicator as well, just to do a little bit more blending. So whatever you feel the most comfortable with here. I kind of switch on and off depending on what area I'm in and, and how much blending I want to try to get here. So you can see that you get a really nice blend with these. You just keep working that those two colors in together. And now I'm going to add a little bit more shadow there up under the scarf. Now I'll go ahead and change to a new applicator or you can flip that one around. So here I flipped it around and I'm starting with that lighter shade of green. And then I'm going to come in with that darker one, the one all the way to the right there. And just add some shadows on this little hat. Now if you get too much on your blender. Just rub it onto some scrap paper and take off any excess that you have. Now here you can see I'm using the flat side of the blender and then I go back to the detail tip. So again mixing up your techniques works really well when you're using these uh, pastels. Now I'll go ahead and do the little brim on the hat. And again, just adding some shadowing here to the sides and right under that ribbon. And then I'll just blend that out. This is very, very easy to do and really fun. This is beautiful to do on your florals. It's even a great way to add some highlighting to your embossing folders. Because you do have a lot more control. If you want to add some highlights to the tops of your embossing folders, you can easily do that with these little applicator tools because you can get right in where you need to go. Now with this lighter blue, I'm gonna do the mittens and then I'm coming in with that medium blue to add a little bit of shadow here. 
sort of at the bottom of the mitten and then kind of where the, the crease is. And then I didn't think that was enough of a shadow, so I'm coming in with that next darker blue and adding a little bit more here. So I did the other mitten the exact same way, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the scarf. As I was doing the scarf, I realized that I didn't stamp the little uh, tassel portion of the scarf, so we'll do that here shortly. So I'm adding again some shading up underneath there. And then I'll use the flat side of the applicator to blend that out. So now I'm going to flip that applicator tool around, going back to that lavender, those lavender colors, and I'm going to do that little band on the hat in that same, those same two colors. So I had previously done a snowman pop-up card, which I have listed up above there, and I will link to down below and on my blog as well where when you die cut this little snowman, he pops up from inside the card. And when you open it, he pops out at you. He can either pop out above the card or in the center of the card. So if you want to check that out, you can, um, again, click on that link below. And you might enjoy that video, especially if you love this little snowman. He's just so cute. But today, again, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I'm just adding a little bit more shadowing here to the snow. I just didn't think it was quite dark enough, so I'm coming in with a little bit more color. And now you can see this little guy is all set. Now, I also had mentioned that I forgot to stamp this little tassel part of the scarf. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of the Art Impressions, the little mini acrylic block, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And then I'll color that in, in those same blue colors that we used before. And I'll just add a little shadowing here. And then I'll just blend that out. So we do have a die cut for this little portion of the scarf here. And we have a die cut for the snowman, but again, we don't want to create all of those little score lines on the snowman. So I'm going to, to create that pop-up that you see there. So what I'm going to do is I will die, die cut that portion of the scarf, but for the snowman, I'm going to go ahead and use my detail scissors and cut that out. So I just followed the line of the stamp all the way around. Now I can go ahead and attach the rest of the scarf here. And I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to attach these. So now using my Tombow black pen, I'm going to just go right around the edges here just to finish off those edges a little bit. That just takes away any of that white edge. So I did that all the way around. Now I'm grabbing a Jelly Roll gel pen and you can see this is called Moonlight. And you get all these beautiful gray tones. And I just wanted a little subtle polka dot on the scarf. And so I'm going to add some little silvery gray dots to this, some little polka dots to this. Now, grabbing the largest die from my Art Impressions Rectangle A2 Double Stitch Die Set, and some paper from the Hero Arts Premium Cardstock in Arctic. This is a 100 pound cardstock. So I've gone ahead and cut a piece of that paper 7 inches by 10 inches. And I will score this at 5 inches. So this would create a standard 5 by 7 inch card. Now we also want to place two little score marks at the 2 and 1 half inch mark. So that's halfway across that five inch front panel. So you could use a pencil here. I'm just going to use the score mark so that I don't have to erase anything. Now you can see the two score marks on the top and the bottom, and I'm lining up the center of this die along that score line. So because I didn't draw a pencil line, I'm going to use my T ruler just to make sure this is nice and straight. And I'm doing all of this on the inside front flap of my card. And I'm tacking that down with some purple tape. 
And then I'll grab that T ruler and just make sure that that center line on the die is right down the middle. And so this die makes it really easy to figure out where to place the die. And I've centered it at the top and the bottom of the card as well. So now I want to cut the right hand side of this little snowman. So I've opened up the card and I'm going to be cutting just from that center line to the right. And that would be towards the fold of the card. So I need to place the plate right along that score line and right along that center portion of the die. So once I have that lined up, I can go ahead and run this through. Now again, that will only cut that right hand side and you can see that there. Now there are some score lines for that pop-up mechanism, but again, we're not using that and it won't interfere with anything here. So don't worry about that. So now I can complete those little score lines that I started before. So I'm going to go from that two and a half inch down to the top of the die and from the bottom up to the die. So right where those cut lines are. Now I can go ahead and fold this back on itself and then I'll just press that out with my bone folder. And now we have our flip flop mechanism. So this is really easy to do. And again, this die makes it so simple because we can just follow that center line on the die itself. Now with my large snowflake dies and my glitter paper here, I'm going to die cut two sets of these snowflakes. And these are the, this is the sparkle cardstock from Lawn Fawn called Pixie Dust. And you do want to run this through a couple of times. These are very detailed, so you want to make sure that on that glitter paper you get all that detail. So now I have all my little snowflakes die cut. And now here's where you could spray this with a spray fixative because this is a pastel that we use, kind of a chalky pastel. So you could use some spray fixative and I will list that down below for you. I did not spray mine. I didn't feel like it was really coming off that much, so I'm not going to worry about it. But if you are worried about that, again, I'll list, uh, you probably want to use a matte spray fixative. You do want to make sure you take that outside to do that or have a well ventilated area when you do that. So now I've placed plenty of that Nouveau Deluxe adhesive all around the back of this little snowman, and I'm going to attach that. You want to make sure that's glued down really well. So now using my Hero Hues Splash ink pad, and these are the reactive inks, and my Hero Arts blending tool, I'm going to go ahead and add some color all the way around this card panel. And I'll include the front as well. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker on the corners just to frame this. And you can pat off a little bit of ink onto your silicone mat and then go up onto your cardstock just to make sure you get a nice even blending here. So now once I have that done, I'm going to grab that little sentiment from that same stamp set and it says, Hello Snow. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half so that I get two words because I want it to fit behind my little snowman. So I've got my Hero Arts memory misty this is the big 12 by 12 misty and i'm using this so that my entire card will fit inside here so there aren't a lot of times that i reach for this memory misty but every once in a while when you're making a large project it is nice to have now you certainly don't need this you could just use an acrylic block and go ahead and stamp your sentiment i'm going to line up the hello snow right in the center of that right hand panel and then I like to test that first just to make sure that it's going to be behind my snowman and that it will be centered on the card. So I'm going to use my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm just going to stamp that quickly and just double check that it's going to line up properly and it does. So now I can go ahead and do my stamping. Especially after you've done all of this work, you don't want to make a mistake here. So it's, it's a lot easier just to do a quick check and make sure everything's lined up. Now, I did get some ink on the, on the platform here, so I'm just rubbing that off with my fingers. So now I've got all my little snowflakes here, 
and I'm going to start adding these. And again, these have that beautiful sparkle to them. So I want some of these to look like they're going off the card and, and just kind of continuing on. And I do want to kind of keep them around the outer edges of the card, just kind of to frame the card itself. And then any excess that hangs over, I can just cut away with my scissors. And I'm just adding little tiny dots of glue here. You could certainly use your Xyron machine if you wanted to, to create these into little stickers, but I found it just as easy just to put a little bit of adhesive on here. And you wanna keep opening and closing the car just to check where you're positioning these little snowflakes. So here I'm just cutting off that excess. Now, if you have enough excess, you can use it in another area on your card. So I'll just continue placing all of these down. Now for this one, you can see that I'm gonna have about half of that snowflake left. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that in another area. So I'll just cut that off and I'll save that little piece. And I can tuck it somewhere else. So I've gone ahead and I filled in all the rest of this area and then I'm just adding some of the smaller ones just to fill in. You can see that nicely frames our card. Now for his little mitten, I wanted to add like he's holding or he caught a little snowflake. So I'm placing one inside the other one here and that fits on that perfectly. And you can see that there, how cute that is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to his little hand. So now we can go ahead and add some details here. So I'm going to back to that palette pastel and I'm going to take that lightest blue color and I'm using that applicator and I'm just going to rub a little bit of that color sort of in the centers of each of these snowflakes, just adding a little shadow here. And because this sparkly paper has got a lot of texture to it, it's gonna hold that ink just fine. So I'm just kind of patting it on. And again, that's just gonna add a little bit of interest to those snowflakes. And you can see those up close. Now I wanna add a little rhinestone. So I'm using these little jewels. These are from Pink Fresh Studios. And I'm using that kind of light blue color. And I'm just going to place one of those right in the center of the snowflakes that he's holding. And to do that, I'm using the spinet pickup stick. This is part of that We Are Memory Keepers spinet artwork. Um, and I just bought it because I just love that it's filled with those little sparkly gems. So I already have some, a couple of pickup tools, but I just had to have this one. I saw it was really inexpensive. So I'm just going to use this and this will easily pick up these little gems. It has a sticky end on it. And what I did like about it is it has that little pointy end on the other side, which helps you just kind of push things right into place. Now I'll grab the Nouveau Dream Drops and this is called Love Potion and these have kind of a pearlescent finish to them. So I'm gonna place some of that on the little nose here. And I do want to check it on my scrap paper first just to make sure there's no bubbles in there. And that'll give a nice pearlized metallic -y finish to the nose. Now I've got my Uniball Signo White Gel Pen and I'm adding a little bit of white back to the eyes. So let's take a closer look at our flip flop card. And so take a look at the dies you have as well and see which ones would make really cute cards like this. You could always go around that with an X-Acto knife as well. If you don't have the die but you love the stamp and you think it would make a great card, 
you can go around that right hand side with a, an X-Acto knife. And I love here that when you do use the die, you get that really pretty finished edge around the snowman here. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.